You know, after mechanicking on the truck for a lot of years, there came a point where I started making my own parts. And it's also, I guess, kind of inevitable when working on older junk like mine. And so when parts get discontinued, folks like us get to work making the gear that our favorite brands, I guess, stopped making some time ago, or maybe never offered in the first place. And look, no complaints here because I love to weld. Hey y'all, I run dual alternators on the 6.5 diesel in my Suburban, and I have for a long time. It was actually a factory option on the 96 to 2000 uh, serpentine setup. All you really needed was one bracket and pulley and a couple other little pieces, and you could install a second CS130 alternator right next to the AC compressor. So I had 205 amp alternators, 210 amps of combined charging capacity, and that's been pretty handy. I'm gonna tell the truth here. <laughs> I first installed those just because I thought it was cool, right? This is, this is years ago, and I was like, oh, dual alternators, that's gonna be great, right? Two are better than one. And I suppose, I suppose that's the case. But the interesting thing, though, is I, will, I would at times post a picture of the engine, and people say, ah, oh, cool, you've got two alternators, how did you do that? And I, and I tell them the story that I told y'all that is about this, this bracket, this very simple bracket and a couple of other parts, but that bracket, like most parts that, you know, just this stuff happens over time, that bracket stopped being made. And so, I started making my own. So you can have your own dual alternator charging setup, and all you need is these two kind of specialized brackets that are, yeah, discontinued from GM, but fortunately, I love to weld. So you've basically got this alternator here that's mounted off this bracket, which this is an engine bracket, and it uh, basically, it mounts to the block and the heads, and then you've got this plate that goes over top of it, and that sandwiches your alternator right here. Very straightforward on how, how this thing is mounted. This is an additional idler that of course mounts to here. When I pull off this bracket, it'll make a lot of sense. But in terms of getting this thing wired, all you gotta do is wire in a parallel controller to the primary that's right over here. So all I did, actually my dad did this years ago, is wire this controller in parallel, and then this tap, this is just a positive right here, and it just goes all the way to, if you'll pretend that that's a battery right there, in fact, this is the combiner post for the rear batteries, but if you just ran it all the way to your positive, all you're doing, no different than having two batteries in parallel to create a high capacity 12 volt system, this is two alternators in parallel. So they're just gonna mount to the, to the same post there, and then this guy uh, is wired in parallel over there. Everything in parallel. I always like to power down the truck before working on any of the charging or starting systems since they're carrying the full current from the batteries. And like most of the other things on this truck, you can take apart darn near the whole truck with a 13 and a 15 millimeter. Make sure you got the power off on the truck because there is a hot lead that goes right across the alternator. Two bolts, that's all you need for a CS130. All right, so I am just, I'm just pulling the bracket. So the alternator, if I were to pull this bolt, the whole alternator would come out. It'd be easy to service, but I'm just changing the bracket to make sure that the new one fits. And that's basically it right there. Okay. So this is basically what you would get from, uh, from GM. This is actually my bracket that I made. Mounts onto an existing you know, bracket, you got a little bit of an extra idler, and off you go. It's so snickin' easy. But all that to say, this is the Rev1 design. This is what I first made, and it's got really nice, all DOM spacers, I'm proud of it. And so what I've now done is I've gone and I've made a couple of you know, optimizing things to make it faster for me to build, thus being able to probably sell it for a little bit less and get more people into dual alternators. So here are the two that I've kind of settled on. You've got Rev1A, which is a very simple evolution of what I've been building up to this point. It's got a nice brace on the back, really good and rigid. It'll have three uh, positions for uh, multiple idlers. The base plate of Rev1A and Rev2 are the same. I'm gonna remove this idler position. Nobody really used it. And it put the pulley crazy close to this bolt head. Um, and that's just that I don't want to be 
kind of a part of if anybody is ever going to shred their belt against the, the bolt head over here. It gets really, really close. And really what you might want to be able to run is shorter belts. So this will be the stock position and these are the two shorter positions. The only difference between these two, this one's a little bit lighter, like a skosh lighter. It's a real kind of, if you want something that's like a personal expression of the way that I like to build and something that's got a lot of nice weld inches on it, this is for you. It will have a little bit of a premium to it. But if you just want basic, get me dual alternators and charging, Rev1A is for you. And I've got the jig and everything laid up so it all goes pretty efficiently. Anyway, look for these on the site. You'll be able to find them. I'm just gonna go ahead and transfer this pulley straight over. So one of the idler positions that I have on here is the original one. So, and it is, it's this second one right here. Let's look at it on a pretty, pretty bracket. This second hole up, this is the original idler position. And that's actually what I'm using. So let's go ahead and just transfer that right on over. We got it all put together and it's just pretty straightforward install. It's a little different because I've already got the alternator in here, but you know, alternator's not hard to put in, especially if you don't have this charge tube right here. It is truly just that easy to put together. I've listed all the additional hardware, the idler, and the belt in the description link, which is all commercially available from certainly my Amazon store, but also your local parts house. all of these brackets myself and all of the proceeds go right back into making more content for the channel. Plus, did I mention how much I enjoy welding? That's going to be about it for this episode and appreciate y'all watching. I know this is kind of like a little bit of an infomercial about these brackets that I make, but look, there's a lot of detail in these. I enjoy making them. It's very good welding practice for me. And if that's something that you're interested in, you know, there's a link in the, in the description here, but appreciate y'all being here and until next time, take care.